Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Some of the people in this room got access to Steam's in-home streaming beta. Orgasms. Some of them didn't. And of course, because the people who did have no idea what it's all about anyway, they have asked me to explain it to them, which I think is just their way of being jerks. And rubbing in the fact that I didn't get it. <laughs> All right, so I guess it's up to me to let them and you guys know what's up with Steam's in-home streaming. So basically, here's what's going on. Valve released the beta of their Steam OS, which is their push towards replacing those pesky consoles in your living room a little while ago, but without some of the key features. One of the big ones that was missing was their in-home streaming, and it addresses a very serious concern that people have and one of the reasons that they own consoles. Not everyone, even the folks who can afford to have nice gaming rigs, can afford to have two of them. One for the man cave or the office, and then another one in the living room. So the only real solution in the past was to like run a long HDMI cable and like some long powered USB cables or use wireless peripherals and then that didn't even address the issue with the small UI elements that made it kind of hard to control a computer from a TV. But SteamOS, okay, first of all they got big picture so they've solved the UI problem for the most part and now with in-home streaming it solves the issue of all those wires as well because you can actually use your home network, so just regular ethernet connections in order to take a picture from one place and send it somewhere else and then it puts from one place and send those back to the other one. So it's actually very similar to Nvidia's uh, game stream that they use to stream from your GeForce enabled PC to Shield, but the difference is that unlike game stream, you're not locked into an Nvidia based graphics card and you're not locked into an Nvidia validated device. So you can stream over the wires, you can stream wirelessly, anything that's pretty much Steam capable and Valve's leaving a lot of room for interpretation here could potentially work. So here's an example. You got a gaming rig somewhere in your home. You stream the video that this is producing with its high-powered graphics cards to some other not very powerful device, such as um, you know a low-powered machine connected to a TV, a laptop, or a tablet, or any other Steam-compatible machine. And then what it does is it takes the input from this device, so I could plug in a controller or keyboard mouse or whatever else, sends that back to the gaming rig, and then takes the video from the gaming rig and sends it here all with, supposedly, and I haven't tried it yet because I don't have it yet, all with low enough latency that you can enjoy the game as if you were basically sitting in front of that high-powered machine. Now, the one caveat is that, um, you can't have someone sitting doing, you know, browsing the web on this machine at the same time that you're gaming somewhere else. So you're still going to have to kind of have one PC per person, like one high-powered PC per person who wants to use it, but I think that is a relatively small price to pay, especially when you, when you consider that there is no other price to pay. All of this is done on your local network. There's no data center or a subscription fee or anything like that. You just play your games the way that you want. Now, in-home streaming is in-home streaming. They're not allowing you to stream over the internet. However, we've seen some people set up kind of like janky solutions with Shield where they're actually gaming outside of their networks. So I suspect the hackers will find a way around that, but nothing is guaranteed right now. Another technical limitation that isn't so much a limitation as it is just a reality is that you're going to want to have a reasonably fast home network. If you can, use a wired gigabit network. Uh, from anecdotal evidence across the web, people have been seeing seamless 60 FPS 1080p with a wired gigabit network. However, there's no guarantees that, uh, you know, a 100 megabit or a wireless connection wouldn't work. In fact, a 5 gigahertz dual band wireless N seems to be the next best thing so far, but for the best experience possible, more bandwidth is better. In fact, I would love to see if in-home streaming could be used for something like 4K, if you could set up a home 10 gigabit network, which could actually be done for a couple thousand dollars these days between two PCs, even with a 10 gigabit switch. So we are getting very close to having extremely fast home infrastructure, which will make technology like this very, very exciting. The good news is if you don't mind dropping to 720p and or 30 FPS, wireless G 2.4 can actually work depending on the game. And you could probably use something like a power line connection in that case as a well, so you'd be basically having the console experience, but I mean, if you're probably used to that on your TV 
anyway. Keep in mind, guys, that the video stream quality will depend on how intense the game is. So if you're playing some sort of high-speed Twitch game that has flashes all over the place and the frames change much more quickly, then you're going to require a better connection than a puzzle or like a tower defense game or something like that. So let's do a summary now. What makes this different from other existing streaming solutions? If you've been paying attention to my channel, we did a Ghetto Shield thing running Splash Top, um, and it was kind of like the latency was kind of high. I mean, it worked, but the latency was kind of high. This is not ghetto like that. Valve spent some serious development time to get this to a very usable state, even as a beta. Because Valve's Steam is a multi-platform application, one of the neat things about it is that a Windows machine can stream to a Linux-based system, connected to a TV. Um, actually, any Steam client can, can, can stream to anything else that's running Steam. So it's very, very cool. A quick word on compatibility, though, is all of Valve's titles are fully supported. However, with third-party titles, especially non-Steam games, there can be a few quirks. This is actually similar to NVIDIA's game stream already anyway. So in the description below, there's a compatibility uh, community Google Docs. You guys can check that out. Don't fret if your favorite game hasn't been patched in. At the time of filming this video, they had just added support for a bunch of games, including Sega, uh, Bass Fishing, my personal favorite. So stay tuned, guys. We're going to have a full setup guide for you with some gameplay footage coming very soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from NCIX.com.